Okay, for question six, we're going to start by setting up tension in both of our sides of the pulley and the weights for each side as well. Those are the forces. Now, K is less than five, so we can tell that the acceleration is going to happen upwards for B. And we're given the acceleration itself in the question one quarter G. Now, what we have here is two separate things that are moving in two separate directions. So we are going to use the left hand one because it doesn't have any unknowns other than T. If we see that straight away, we can substitute in the resultant force, which would be downwards. So 5 mg minus T is equal to the mass 5 m times the acceleration, which is a quarter of G. We're going to leave G in there because that's actually in our final answer. And if we just rearrange, we do 5 mg take away 5 quarters mg. And that leaves us with 15 quarters mg, which is the answer. Okay, now that we've found out what the value of the tension is, and we're given it in the question anyway, we are going to address the other side, the other particle, particle B, and use F equals MA on this particle. This time, the force is pointing up because that's the way the acceleration is going. And so T minus KMG equals the mass, which is KM, times the acceleration, which, as was before, a quarter G. Now, we're ch going to change T to the thing that you are given in the first part, 15 over 4 mg, minus kmg equals km g over 4. Now we can divide through by mg and cancel those out. If I rearrange this, I move the k to the other side, so add k to k over 4. I'm going to leave 15 over 4 on its own. And so k plus k over 4 is 5k over 4. And if I multiply through by 4, I get 15 equals 5k, and then divide through by 5, I get k is equal to 3. OK, so stating how you have used the information that the pulley is smooth, the way you've used it is you've used the, the t as being the tension on both sides. So you've assumed that the tension is equal at both ends. That's how you've used it. Now, you may have given a different answer that doesn't score any marks. That's true, but you wouldn't have used that piece of information. OK, so we're going to start with SUVAT. We're going to find out um, all the information about the motion of A reaching the floor. So the plane is referring, in this case, to the plane of the floor, which it hits, so the ground. We know that it starts from rest. We know what the acceleration is, and we're given the time in this part of the question. So we're going to go on and find S. S is the distance to the ground using the SUVAT equation on the screen. It's 1.764 meters. We're then going to go on and find the velocity with which it hits the ground. And again, it's SUVAT. I'm using the um, letters that I was given, not the one that I've just calculated in case I made a mistake. Now, here is A hitting the ground. Here is B way up in the air. Now, the distance that we found needs to be doubled to be that distance. Now, the reason is the black balls are where we started from, and we've moved. A moved down by 1.764 meters. It, B moved up 
by 1.764 meters. So it's double that above the ground at the moment. What we need to do now is at this point, the string goes slack. The acceleration is going to become g. So it's going to be minus 9.8. The speed at which um, b hits that point is going to be 2.94, the same speed that a is when it hits the ground. What we need to do now is find the, the distance it takes for b to reach a speed of zero, which is what you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen right now. We find a distance, s, as being 0 0.441 meters, and we add all of these numbers together. Because the question is really clear, find the greatest height reached by b above the plane, above the ground. It rounds to 4.0 meters. And that's the end 